Hey everybody, I've been asked loads about this, so I thought I'd do a quick video for you. Key audit matters. Definition. Okay, let's get straight on then with the definition. It is something in our judgment, the auditor's judgment, that we think is the most significant item, or items, key audit matters, out of all the things that we spoke about, that we communicated with those charged with governance, you know, basically uh, management. So what do we mean about these significant things then? So it's things that we think, look, these were the most significant stuff. And who are we telling? Well, we're telling the users, okay? We're telling the shareholders. And we want to say, well, these are the most significant things that came up. We're not saying they did it badly. We're saying they did it right. Uh, and we're just saying this are the most significant. So when we talk about most significant, we mean the things with... Lots of risk, high risk of material misstatement. Things that took lots of our judgment or management judgment, such as fair values, such as provisions, such as impairments, you know, recoverability, uh, the recoverable amount, that sort of thing. Also, things like big events. So uh, what sort of big events could happen? Uh, acquisition of a subsidiary, for example, there could be big industry or regulation changes, and that will affect the riskiness and, and the management's opinion and all that sort of thing, okay? So, it's key audit matters, key significant things. So, I'm going to add a couple more on in terms of this key thing. I'm going to say what we also should do is avoid overload. It's not what are all the matters that came up? It's what are the key matters? And you've got to be really specific. Okay, so you can't just have a template. You can't just say, oh, uh, acquiring a sub is a big thing. Might not be, might only be a small thing. Um, so you're not allowed to use templates. So right? be really specific to the audit that you're doing. So I thought it'd be a good idea to help you decide, well, what do we decide that is the most significant? And the first thing is... It's important to the users. You know, how important is it for them to know? What was the amount of subjectivity? What was the amount of complexity involved in this issue? What was the nature and the amount of any error due to the matter? Okay, what was the amount of effort that we put in? auditor effort and when we're talking about auditor effort we're talking about how much specialist knowledge did we need how much did we need to go to external consultants how much time did we spend on these things other things that might make us decide whether it's significant or not was how many difficulties did we have in doing the audit procedures in doing our substantive tests on the matter. Were there any control deficiencies uh, linked to this matter? Did this matter have any other effects? So you might be looking at, uh, I don't know, long-term contracts and therefore the effect on revenue as well. All those sorts of things will help you decide what are the key audit matters. So, once we've decided what are the key audit matters, we then need to communicate it, don't we? Communicate them to the users. So, how do we go about it? Well, we refer to any disclosure in the financial statements. So, there might not be one, but often there will be disclosure already about this uh, issue in the financial statements, if there is any, but not a duplicate. No point duplicating what's already in there. This is from our point of view now, not the management. We also need to communicate, well, why is it so significant? And this is where we talk about the judgment, the complexity, the amount of the error, that sort of thing. And then how did we go about dealing with it? So all that needs to go in the paragraph, right? Now, where does this paragraph go? Where does this key audit matter go? Well, it goes close to the opinion. Not great, is it, that close to the opinion? Um, those of you who follow my classrooms will know that I use this. Only bad materials, bad uh, notes and things, emphasise 
knowledge only. So you've got opinion, you've got basis of opinion, you've got the material uncertainty, ongoing concern, you've got the emphasis of matter, just not so important now, and then you've got the key audit matters and then other matters. But what we're saying is this key audit matters could jump up to there. Probably not, probably jump up to there. Um, you know, obviously depending on whether there is a material uncertainty ongoing concern. But only bad materials emphasize knowledge only. But put the key audit matter paragraph as close as you can. Now, in that key audit matters paragraph, you know, you might have four key audit matters. Well, what order did you put them in? Well, again, that's up to your judgment. All right. Now, I'm going to also say here, when you're communicating it, you've got to be really succinct, which means don't go on and on and on. Don't be like a blooming ACCA textbook, which just goes on and on and on and on. Why not? Because you don't want to overload them. You want them to understand it. You've got to be balanced. You've got to show no jargon. Keep it simple. Really, really important in everything we do, isn't it? So keep it simple. No jargon. Just show what our approach was to the main aspects. You know, what are the main aspects of our approach on this key audit matter? Brief procedures that we did, an overview of those brief procedures that we performed on this key audit matter. And then what was our key observations and what were the outcomes of this? Keep it succinct, keep it simple, keep it balanced, make it easy for the um, user to understand. And remember, we're showing things that they've done right. This is not, oh, these are things that have gone wrong. No, these are things that have been done right. Really hope it helps.